The ladies will kick it. The rhyme that is wicked. Those that don't know how to be pros get evicted. Ooh, ladies first. Ladies first. Mm, it's a hydration situation where the locker room comes to life and the X's and O's meet the I's and U's. Y'all want to show some love. I know y'all do. Like and subscribe to this channel because you're going to love this topic given to us by Nick Wright about Deshaun Watson. And those who try to defend Deshaun Watson, he ain't got no time for it. We all know how Deshaun Watson went down with a torn Achilles. And there was a sigh of relief from a small minority or a large majority of Cleveland Browns fans sitting there like, about damn time. Or some of them like, mm, that's sad, but oh well. Whatever it may be, Nick Wright had a very interesting, profound take on the response to Deshaun Watson going down. But y'all know how we do on this show. First, you got to make sure you log on to projecttransition.org because you got to help us in the community educate and empower those itty bitties and give them exposures and resources. Yes, we meet the kids where they are and take them where they want to go for making their dreams a reality. So make sure you are running to projecttransition.org and helping us educate and empower these itty bitties. And how can you do that? Well, become a gym member right there. You see gym membership, and I will send you that book, Never Shut Up, Sign, Sealed, and Delivered, and you become one of our exclusive gym members. Merch, events, activations, all the above, and the good feeling of helping out in the community. All right, let's get into this again, okay? Mm, let me get my Latifah voice on. Shout out to the homegirl, too, man. See her all the time. Our kids go to school together. Ain't that fresh? The ladies will kick it. The rhyme that is wicked. Those that don't know how to be pros get evicted. Ooh, ladies first. Ladies first? Well, Nick Wright doesn't think it's ladies first. Nick Wright thinks it's something else. So let's get into what the Nick Wright says. I almost said something else. <laughs> Y'all heard me? <laughs> no diddy. No diddy. Pause. All the other stuff y'all want to say. All right, let's get into this. Let it go. The reason people are so galled at the vociferous defense of Deshaun Watson after he pops his Achilles, the reason I was so galled is the very simple fact of this. The only class of people Deshaun Watson could have been accused of doing what he did to those people are women. If Deshaun Watson was credibly accused of abusing two dozen children, his teammates would not embrace him. And if Deshaun Watson was accused of using his power, influence, and physical stature to sexually abuse two dozen male masseuses, mm -hmm. his teammates wouldn't embrace him. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so galling. Is you can say, oh, it's a family. They're not worried about off the field. I am here to tell you right now. Tell and us. everyone listening and watching knows it if what deshaun watson was accused of doing and settled lawsuits and there's new lawsuits and incredibly credible allegations if it involved children no team would have touched him and if it involved men mm. no team would have touched him because they'd have been worried um will the locker room accept him but because it involved grown women there was an understanding eh if he's good, I think they'll, I think it'll be okay. I think guys will be fine with it. And then as it turned out, even though he was the worst quarterback in the league, hmm. when the guy pops his Achilles and fans have a unfortunate reaction, we got folks standing up there saying he's been a model citizen for most of his career. Okay. I mean, John Wilkes Booth was a model theater patron for most of his life. I mean, I mean, what are we talking about? Okay, I hear you. <laughs> okay, uh, that was a short video, so no need to interrupt the great Nick Wright. Yes, and I say great because I got an affinity for that dude. He has tremendous talent, and his takes are sick, even if it, you have to disagree with him. This one's interesting. Let's slice this up because I think overarching, if you talk about what he was saying was the response to Deshaun Watson. And how that response was galling to Nick Wright and others. Galling being defined as annoying and humiliating uh, doesn't conveniently 
map itself onto your reaction to Deshaun Watson. Okay, so when I saw Deshaun Watson go down, the first thing I felt was that same tingle that I feel for anybody, regardless of history, regardless of the person. When I hear someone get executed on death row, me, I'm like, I get this tingle, like, because human life was lost. Now, then I also, my brain kicks in. And my brain's like, but that person took some human life. Then the tingle continues, right? So I understand the people who went immediately to like, damn, that's messed up. Deshaun Watson hurt. Oh, well, he's Deshaun Watson, the, uh, cr the credibly accused, which we'll talk through as, as well. But if you start with, damn, that's messed up. And then we're like, oh, oh, well, it's him. I hear you. But if you start off with, oh, well, it's him. And then you're like, but dang, that's kind of messed up. How different are you? I think we're really talking to the population who didn't have a contrast and reaction. Who was the one out there like, oh, well. <laughs> I said, oh, well, that's it. I don't care about that fool. And versus the person who was like, man, he's still a player. Like Jameis Winston. Man, that's still my teammate. That's still a guy who fought, et cetera. But let's get into what he really was talking about. He was really talking about kids versus men versus women. Ooh, ladies first. Ladies worst. He asserts that if this had happened to kids, then nobody would have ever, ever defended Deshaun Watson. And Deshaun Watson wouldn't even be on the NFL roster to get hurt, to pop his Achilles. Is that true? Absolutely, I think that's true. Why do I think that's true? For pretty obvious reasons, once you stop and think. And I'm going to stop and think, if this were me being in the league and they were like, are oh, we going to bring in this quarterback? All right, who is it? You know, the guy who's been accused of messing with 40-some kids. The first thing we heard when he said accused was credibly accused. And that's the whole conversation in itself. Like, if you get accused by a homeless person, a person who has no resume, a person who has no status, are they credible? Is that a credible accusation? Would you say that you've been credibly accused? Or would you just say you've been accused? What if it's uh, a Supreme Court justice? <laughs> you know what I mean? Somebody with, you know, a pristine pedigree. That's credibly accused? That's a conversation in itself, isn't it? Accused versus credibly accused, right? So we're already making a judgment on the person when we should be just looking at the accusation to see how credible that is. Okay. Remember that, credibly accused. Kids. Nah, I can't have them, coach. Coach ain't having it. Player, want to know why? Kids are defenseless. Kids, pure kids, they're defenseless. Yeah, I know it. I have a 25-year-old who went through the phases of being a kid. I have a 9-year-old, 5-year-old, a 4-year-old right now. And right now, I talk to them the deceptions that are out there lurking. Everything from, you know, as a parent, kidnapping, your kid walking around, you have six flags with your kid, and they're like, oh, oh, look at that. And they just take off and run for that toy. Oh, look at that ride. Look at that prize. And you're like, do you understand that all these people out here ain't your homie? Oh, no, no, daddy, if somebody ever came to me, I'll scream. I said, no, you wouldn't. You would try. They was like, well, no, no. And this is me and MJ talking. And then I grab his mouth. I said, scream. That's him screaming. You hear it? Listen. I said, exactly. I said, somebody of my size, or not even my size, just my strength, somebody older will grab your mouth, act like they playing with you. Come here, little boy. You're so stupid. Ah, I love you. You over there. He got you bundled up. I could do it. If I could do it, it could be done. Calm down. Kids are defenseless. They're naive as well. You got to talk about all the inner workings of a, you know, you got to almost spoil their childhood sometimes. Like, hey, these people out here, and not all of them are friendly. Not all of them nice. Okay? So we know kids, defenseless, naive. Nah, son. Men. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh, if it were against men? And that kind of caught me when he first said that. I said, let me stop and think longer on this one. Why would it be an issue if Deshaun Watson was accused of messing with or assaulting 40-some men? First thing I could think of was the homophobia that exists in the locker room. And I don't think it's deep, real homophobia. I won't lie. All my experiences, I don't think it's deep. Dudes in the locker room, they clown all day. 
meat watching, clowning people with no meat, all that. That's what we do. You know, you can call us what you want, but being in the locker room, it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cats in there talking about women, talking about dudes, clowning everybody. But it's almost like you got jokes into it's real. And then when it's real, and you're like, oh, he really? Like, we already had a gay NFL player, right? For the, for the Raiders. And then when that happens, you're like, oh, I was just clowning. I was just joking. It is. <laughs> but homophobia is a, is an issue in the NFL, in all sports, in, where men are. <laughs> you know, let's just be real. You know, men are like, look, I, uh, I was born to procreate. <laughs> I came from a procreation of a woman and a man. And guess what? I'm trying to do it too. I'm trying to run it back. So anything that disrupts that, people could call it homophobia and some deeper issues and some some like disparaging words, but really it's just your wiring saying, no, 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 no. I'm just trying to protect this. Protect how I got here. Protect how I'm going to get somebody else here. My itty bitty. That's how I look at it. But I don't think it's deep. I don't think it's pervasive. I don't think it stops anything. But that was my first thought. And then I start thinking, oh. And we don't talk enough about this because it's a conversation about the WNBA when they talk about sexuality. They talk about how many of those women are, mm-hmm, uh, yeah, ladies, the L, uh-huh, and they get down. And we all know, we, we, we get it. They, uh, they've come out. It is. It's out the closet. But then you watch, and you never think about and I never hear this, Larry, because not a a lot of people go and keep it 100. They don't keep it thou wow. Workplace harassment. Imagine you go somewhere and the culture is pervasive in terms of, hey, we get down with each other too. So, and I've heard this. I've heard this. You go to work, your teammate on your head. <laughs> you go to work, your coach on your head. There have been harassment claims in the WNBA. Because they have that. Women who go to work, heterosexual, and go to work with people who are not, and they trying to holler. Like, hold on, let me work on your form, girl. You missed that shot for a reason. Come here. Rubbing they forearm down to that elbow, hit that tricep, touch that tickle button. Ah! <laughs> Shoot, girl. I got you. Okay, so if that was the NFL, Deshaun Watson coming in 40 loaded with dudes, it's one thing to be the meat watcher or the one <laughs> clowning the meat watcher, all that, whatever you are in the locker room. And stop playing because I'm in the locker room, so stop playing. You ain't got no meat. <laughs> she ain't happy, brother. <laughs> you better be lucky you with her. Because, <laughs> boy, if I come over there, boy, we're going to have to rearrange some furniture. You know what I'm saying? All that stuff. So then I'm looking like, damn, you imagine somebody come in 40-something deep on credible accusations, and then he walking in there and talking about, oh, what's up? That what's up looks a little different because <laughs> you like, what's going down? <laughs> okay, so I hear you, Nick, right on that one. You, you had to convince me a little bit, but you did a good job of it. I can see that. I can see that. But that's the kids? Absolutely not. Men, I'm like, can I can I see page 38 of the the lawsuit? <laughs> page 44, please. I'm like a details. I'm like, mm -hmm. there's a chance. How good is he? <laughs> you know what I mean? Deshaun Watts was pretty damn good when they traded for him, et cetera. But now let's get to the women. Ladies first. Ladies worst. Uh. <sighs> There's no other word to say, but this is the typical. This is the normal accusation, right? If you had to just sum them up by the numbers, by the metrics. Men accused of assaulting women. Even though I know men who have been assaulted by women. I've been assaulted by a woman. Men hit on women, even though we know women hit on men, especially powerful women. You ain't. You ever go to the cocktail party and the senior executive vice president, her, think you cute? And it's offensive if you return their favor. It's offensive if you start it with them if they don't want it. But I didn't want it either. Another video. But it's typical, normal by the numbers, right? Okay, so that's a natural dynamic where you're like, it's natural because socially we've been normalized to it, so it feels like that, right? And I don't mean natural like in this is in innate state. I'm talking about like, all right, we've been socialized with that. That's kind of normal. That's how it goes. Then you get into the questions. Like with the, the kids, we say they're defenseless. Are these women defenseless? 
Uh, I'm trying to poke holes in what Nick Wright said because I think that's why Deshaun Watson was able to come through one of those holes. Defenseless. So I can see Deshaun Watson, uh, uh, Getter, David Mulligetta, his agent. They're like, look, these are accusations, credible accusations. Use your words. I don't care. But are we talking about people, all these situations, were they defenseless? Nobody out there could say, yes, absolutely. You don't know. You're just like, huh, I wonder if they were. Like, did you need the $200 massage to get it? Did you need that rent money? or Defenseless. Like, the way I'm raising my kids, you're not defenseless. If somebody tripping and you you there to work and they ain't there to work, they there to play, you out. You ain't defenseless, okay? That's me. That's the Wiley way. So you got some holes. You're starting to say, well, they're not kids and defenseless, right? You don't have the resistance of the, the homophobia. It's not the same as the men either. So, okay, let's just break this down. We also say the kids were naive. You can say that. You can say to a greater degree that the women may have been more naive than defenseless. Because, look, I got this flyer out there. I am going to massage you. And it gets this way to Deshaun. And he hits the number, 1-800, yeah, girl, like whatever. You know what I mean? Y-E-A-G-I-R-L, all right? Yeah, girl. So then he calls it up, and then, you know, you're naive because you coming in hot, and you coming in hype. You coming in to rub Deshaun Watson, which means, I know, massage therapist, you about to get paid. <laughs> this is a good tip. Good, 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 good tip. How much for one rib? Nah, <laughs> she about to get paid. And she going to get that on her resume so she can get even more people. You imagine somebody rubbing you and you just a narp, or you the regular old dude, and he, she's like, he's like, wow, this is one of the best massages I've ever got. Wow, who you, where you been trained and how long you been doing this? She's like, well, you know, I, I do a lot for the Houston Texans and Deshaun Watson and others. Um, um, are you busy next Tuesday too? <laughs> but tell my boys, you know what I mean? So I get it. But we just proved, at least in, in the absolute state, that they weren't defenseless. We proved already in the absolute sense that they weren't naive. Some of them, most of them. But then you, you catch it. You catch it pretty quick. Like, wait a minute, what this dude doing? <laughs> I mean, like, I've not seen any macking. I'm talking about ethical, legal macking that doesn't come in steps. First step is this, you know, like they do in the movies. It was a good movie. Look at me. I'm watching Project Transition, the movie. Pretty good movie. You like it? Okay. Yeah. You know, the corny movie, the movie like this. Yeah. You start rocking. He's like, yeah. You got that. And when you're rocking, you're putting that knee out. You're stretching your groin because you want to touch her her leg. Knee, no, knee on knee now. Y'all can't see this. Then you hit him with that. Oh, look at my itty bitty. Hi, baby. Yes, baby. Can you make my breakfast now? Absolutely. We'll use your light. Two waffles. Two waffles. Little syrup, right? Yeah. Okay. Can Daddy finish this and then uh, come up and make it? Fine. Wow. <laughs> right on time, right? Okay. Love you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's that's how you get love. You're the yeah. Okay. So then you're doing this. You're like this. <clears throat> ah. Then it's like shoulder, etc. Y'all get the steps. Okay. So we, we're trying to say defenseless, eh, some, some, little, naive, a lot more. Desire. Did they want Deshaun Watson? Did anybody want Deshaun Watson to do what Deshaun Watson did? On this show, we keep it that wow. Are you going to go zero or 100 on that? You can't go zero, can you? You can't go 100 either. And I think those holes right there is how Deshaun Watson, David Mulligetta, got him out of Houston, got him accepted. And it wasn't so much what Nick Wright said. Oh, if it were kids, absolutely not. Men, absolutely not. Yeah, I don't know. How good is it? Kids, yeah, yeah. Come on, man. No, ain't nobody. No kid. We get that. But then as adults, I think we're telling on ourselves that we know we're guilty of doing things that we say that we did differently. We all are liars in that capacity of summing ourselves up romantically in any situation. So
So when you hear an adult accuse somebody of something, you're always suspicious because you're like, everybody ain't keeping a thou out. Like, you know, you can see it with Diddy. One case. Oh, man, he should have settled that. He didn't. Now he got a thousand cases. Where were the thousand before the one? That. So um, I like his points. I really like just I wanted to talk through that because I was like, damn, that's dope. But damn, is it real? It ain't zero. It ain't one. Honey, oh my God, good topic, good topic. And my little itty bitty came in right on time, right? Let me make sure I got all this out of here. I did. Now it's time for us to log on to projecttransition.org. Why do we have to do that, Marcellus? Why do we have to support you in the community? You know, why do we have to do that? Well, you don't have to, but I just think that it's good to do this. And I will give you a membership gift of a signed, sealed book of Never Shut Up. Yep, and you become a gym member, a giver every month to the community. Basically, I'm, I'm out there doing all the work with the volunteers and everybody and all the celebs and influencers and high-profile network, all the people with success stories, teachers, everybody to give these kids more of a great experience. I'm not playing that video because that video plays loud, but why not? Let me hit it. All right, let's go get it. And that's what we do. So this is the NFL Skills Camp where we help the itty-bitties out. And we do a ton of things, as y'all will see if you keep watching this show. Love for you guys. So make sure I can shout you out. I want to give every single giver every month a shout out. This is this giver's shout out. RZA. Oh, the RZA. Y'all know the R from Woo Tang. Woo Tang. Uh, Zalamita made a one-time $10 donation supporting Project Transition. Hopefully, I can give more in the future, and I will be happy to spread the word. We'll bring positive vibes through my platform. Oh, I love that. It doesn't matter the amount. It just matters because it counts. <laughs> oh, look at that. Rhyme, 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 rhyme. Love for you guys, man. Have an amazing day out there. Go, go, go. I got to go feed this little girl some waffles. You little baby girl. What's up, y'all? It's Marcel Swiley, founder of Project Transition and proud gym member. I'm excited to share with you an opportunity that will support our kids on their mission to making their dreams a reality. At Project Transition, we believe that real change comes from consistent action and support. That's why we invite you to join our powerful gym membership program that is making a difference every single day. As a gym partner, by giving every month, you'll fuel our mission by providing monthly support that turns into real empowerment and education for underserved youth. Your commitment reduces school dropouts, nurtures communities, and funds impactful programs like the Rising Stars Academy that we share. Together, we can turn potential into prosperity. Join the group of community champions driving change. Your contributions will help aid success by providing essential educational resources, building critical life skills, and fostering community strength. There's no better feeling than knowing your support will ignite hope, foster dreams, and empower the next generation. Join us today and be a part of transformative change. Help our youth become greater than their greatest excuse. Become a gym partner. Thank you.